uh, start date and stop date is a bit like the published radio button up above. It's just when you first enter a product, if you leave these fields blank, uh, it'll put the start date of today in, and the stop date will be left blank. But if you had a, a product that you wanted to stop showing in a particular day, you can enter a stop date and say you had a, a seasonal promotion, and then you could enter that stop date here, and the product would stop showing on the website once that date was hit. Okay, and then there's quite a few little options here. Show buy button, yes or no. That uh, turns the add to cart form off. So let's see what that looks like. If I turn that off and hit update, let's refresh and we're back to this simple product. And you can see that the add to cart form is completely gone now. So if you had a product and for some reason you weren't quite ready to start selling it yet, but you wanted to show it to people, uh, you could use that option. So I'm going to turn that back on. Requires registration to view. That's um, if you need a customer to be logged in before they're allowed to see the product page. Um, so I won't be able to show you that right now because I am actually logged in. But it just puts up a login prompt on the product page and until that person's logged in and then, then they can see the product page. Is call to order. That puts up a uh, uh, is called order prompt and it replaces the add to cart form so instead of being able to add the product to your cart via the website you you just see the call to order prompt and I'll show you what that looks like so now you can see uh, call to order shows up and and a lot of people will actually add their phone number to the end of this string and you can you can change that under string resources so I'll turn that off hide price until cart that just removes the price from the product page so you can see the price disappeared I got my add to cart form back and then once you add the item to your cart, you'll of course be able to see the price on your shopping cart page. Allow to be added to packs. Uh, that just means that this product is eligible for, for adding to a pack product. If you set up a pack product, that's a product that allows you to browse the site, add products to your pack, and then check out with that product. Um, exclude from product feeds. That allows you to exclude this particular product from your feeds. Uh, feeds are, are product data feeds out to places like Google Base or Google Products, Yahoo Shopping, and Shopzilla. Um, Storefront allows you to install product feeds and, and feed data out that way. And this, if you use feeds, just allows you to turn this particular product off in that feed. Uh, is a kit that enables you to set up a kit product with multiple options on it. Um, if you need more flexibility than a product variance can offer you, you may want to consider using kit products. Uh, kit products will only allow you to use the kit product XML package. The rest of these won't work with kit products. And the same is true of pack products. See this pack product XML package is the only one that works with pack products the most part you'll you'll use no for those two track inventory by size and color so down at the variant level of a product you can specify size and color attributes and this allows you to track inventory per color and size attribute if you'd like to do that um, if you don't use those I'd recommend leaving that as no and this color option prompt if for example you didn't want to use the word color in front of your color attributes but shade for example you could override the color uh, option prompt and put shade in there as well um, the same is true for size if you wanted it to be something other than size uh, requires text field so this is like a custom text area and I'll kind of show you what this does. If you had a product that 
you wanted a, a user to be able to enter some custom text on, for example, an inscription on a ring. In fact, let's do that. That'll work. And then requires text field, yes or no. We'll say it, it's required. Let's update that. So now you can see you get this inscription field in. You can enter your custom inscription on your product. Turn that back off for now. And that gets us through the main tab of, of the product data. So let's take a look at the images tab. So in the quick product entry, I went over adding product images and I let you know that the large by default will create the medium and the icon images. Um, I didn't jump into the multi image manager, which I'll show you right now. Um, so what this allows you to do is add multiple different views to to your product images. So right now we've only got one one view of, of the product. And if you wanted to have alternate views, uh, you'd set those up under the multiple image manager. So in slot number one, you'll want to put the same view that you've already got. You'll want to put your default view, which in my case is large one. So I'll choose that. And then my view number two is going to be large two. So I'll choose that one as well. Okay. And now you can see You've got that front view, the same one that's the default image, and number two is this right view image. Now that I've got those, go ahead and update our product info. And if we refresh the product page, you'll see these product views pop into place, which allow you to switch your views. And if you click on the image, you get the larger image of that particular view as well. You'll also notice that it created the large multi-image manager creates the medium as well as the icon images, at least in a default installation of storefront if you've got it configured with the default settings. So that's product images. Um, over to the summary tab. On the summary tab, um, you can enter a product summary. Now this doesn't show anywhere on the website by default. You can add it to your XML package if you customize your XML package and show your summary. Some people add it to their category or department XML package so that you can see a short description of the product before actually clicking on it. And the description is very similar, only this actually does show up on the website. It shows obviously right here on the product page. And you don't have to enter just plain text in here if you don't want. You can enter uh, some HTML in there. You can add images there if you'd like. And this editor allows you to, to switch between HTML view and design view.